When we think of a dual carriageway in England, this is the sort of thing we imagine. Mmm, what a nightmare. But not all dual carriageways are the same. Take a look at this. The sign says dual carriageway, yet you're in Norfolk, surrounded by farms, field and nature. Say what? This is Tunstead Road. And this is also Tunstead Road. And so is this, and it's this Tunstead Road that we'll be looking at today. It's quite a short section of road, but its unique feature is that for around six or 700 metres, the road falls under D1 classification. The road classification system came around in the 1920s as a way to number or mark roads to allow for ease of journey planning, and in the 1960s, the system was overhauled to allow for the newly built motorway system. Dual carriageways were assigned with the letter D with the number following corresponding to the amount of lanes that that road had. So, for example, a D2 road would be a dual carriageway that had two lanes in each direction. Therefore, a D1 road would be a dual carriageway with one lane heading in each direction, and that's exactly what we've got here at Tunstead Road. Some of you might be thinking, how can it possibly be a dual carriageway with only one lane in each direction? A dual carriageway isn't defined by the number of lanes that it's got, it's down to the separation between the carriageways. If there's a clear separation between the carriageways, then it could be classed as a dual carriageway no matter how many lanes there are on either side. Tunstead Road is your fairly typical English B road, but at one end the carriageway splits into two, giving us this rural dual carriageway. Remarkably, as a result of this section being a dual carriageway, it also gets the full 70 mile an hour national speed limit. So that's what it is. The next question is why it is. To answer that, we need to look a short distance to the west where we find Coltishall Airfield, or RAF Coltishall if you prefer. Before the airfield, there would have been nothing but potato fields covering the area, but in 1938, plans were announced to build an airfield on 530 acres of farmland. And perhaps this was quite good timing, given that there was a large-scale argument about to break out in 1939. The airfield opened in 1940, and apparently it's quite common for airfields to take the name of the nearest railway station, which in this case is Buxton. However, they didn't choose the name Buxton for this airfield because they thought it would create confusion with the town of Buxton in Derbyshire. Instead, they went for Scotto before settling on Coltishall. The first aeroplanes to arrive at Coltishall was a squadron of Spitfires and Hurricanes who played a key part in the Battle of Britain, and it's believed that the first enemy aircraft neutralisation was performed by a Spitfire that flew from Coltishall. The airfield was initially built with grass runways. It wouldn't be until 1950 in the Cold War that asphalt runways were added. In 1956, the runways were strengthened and extended once again, allowing them to take on the largest of aircraft. As a result, the airfield was designated as a V-bomber dispersal airfield. What this meant was that in the event of the destruction of the V-bomber's home bases, Coltishall would serve as a backup airfield, allowing the Vulcan, Victor and Valiant bombers somewhere to return home to. Later on, and the airfield would play host to a squadron of English Electric Lightning fighters. Concorde would visit as part of an excursion flight, and the Sepkat Jaguar would find a home at Coltishall during the Bosnian and Gulf Wars of the 90s. The site closed in 2006, but I haven't answered the question, have I? When the airfield was first built and planned, the intention was to upgrade parts of the surrounding road network. Not massively, but just enough to allow them to get larger trucks and military vehicles around a little bit easier. For example, the B1150 was widened slightly because it served as one of the main access roads for the airfield. Tunstead Road saw an upgrade as well, where it was turned into a dual carriageway. This created a passing point for larger vehicles that would have been delivering or transporting goods around the base, and it avoided the build-up of traffic and created a traffic bottleneck. The mystery though is when. When did this road get changed to a dual carriageway? If we look at an early 1900s map we can see that it's just a simple B road and if we look at more modern maps we can see that yeah it shows as a dual carriageway but in between it's all a little bit unclear. I can't tell you for sure because it seems that the information just doesn't exist but we do have a couple of options. It could have been done when the airfield was first built along with the upgrades applied to the B1150 and that kind of makes sense. But it also makes sense for the additions to have come later in the 1950s when the airfield extended the runways and site boundaries. During the Cold War, you might have been moving large missiles around which were stored on the east side of the airfield, so a passing point or two probably helped a bit. If anybody knows for sure, let me know. Thanks for watching.